Hello and welcome to this video. Have you ever seen a question like this where you're given an object of a given of a certain mass and then its velocity changes? Then you're asked to determine the resultant force which is acting on it. This problem has three concepts which I'm going to teach you in this video. One is how to determine change in a vector quantity or the resultant vector. Uh, the other one is the acceleration. And the final one is, is use of Newton's second law, which uh, deals with the resultant force. And I'm going to use this question to do that. In this question, you are told that there is a tennis ball of mass 200 grams, which is approaching um, a player with a velocity of horizontal velocity of 75 meters per second it is struck with a racket and moves in the opposite direction with a velocity of 90 meters per second the ball is in contact with the racket for 20 milliseconds we are asked to determine the magnitude of the resultant force the racket exerts on the ball so if I can start with the final part where I'm asked to determine the resultant force, because this is the way our minds work. When we are asked to calculate a given physical quantity, we want to know how do I do that? And then we work backwards to see how we get various physical quantities which are going to help us to calculate that final physical quantity. In this case, we want the resultant force. So we walk backwards. How do we get resultant force? If it is a system whereby forces have been given, you can work out the resultant force. If other physical quantities such as uh, velocity and acceleration are given, you think about Newton's second law, which is F is equal to ma. And if I start from there, let's see what we are going to get. So I want to start from this situation here where I say that uh, resultant force, which is F, is given by the mass times the acceleration. If I break down this equation, the acceleration is velocity, final velocity, minus initial velocity over the time. If I break down that one further, I'm going to see that V minus U is change in velocity. And of course, there is time. Now, when you look at this question, we've been told that this ball is approaching the wall with an initial velocity of 75 meters per second. It strikes the wall let's say the wall is somewhere around here strikes the wall and bounces back in the opposite direction with a final velocity of 90 meters per second it is in contact with the wall for a time of 20 milliseconds which is simply 0 0.0 two seconds now this is what i said working backwards until you know which physical quantities you are supposed to use because when questions are given it's not immediately obvious that the equation to use is this one so i was prompted to think about f is equals to ma from two points I was asked to calculate the resultant force and I could see in this system forces have not been given so I have to think about another way which is Newton's second law which is resultant force equals to rate of change of momentum which is ma so I broke it down until I get velocity until I get those physical quantities which have been given in the question most questions require you to do that kind of analysis so at this point using u and v i'm able to find the change 
in velocity because that is what I require here. So for me to get change in velocity, which is um, this one here, I've got to do final velocity minus the initial velocity. So this is what I get. So change in velocity is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity. And this is where most students have a problem because most of them will do 90 minus 75 to get 15. And they think that that is the change in velocity. No, that is not the change in velocity. It is change in speed. There's a difference between speed and velocity. And I won't go into that one right now. I want just to stick to velocity. But if you have been asked to calculate change in speed, it will be 90 minus 75, which will be 15 meters per second. Because I know that is what some of us were thinking, that that is how to approach the question. That is not how to approach the question. It is not worked out that way. I've got to get change in velocity. Velocity is a vector. And when we are dealing with, we are either adding or subtracting vectors, we've got to put in the idea of direction. So in this case over here, when we are subtracting two vector quantities, we treat them like addition. V plus minus U. Now what does this mean and why is it important? I'm going to represent these velocities using arrows. So the first one is that one which is 90 and it points in that direction. This plus sign here is here. And by the way, I'm adding because when it comes to vectors, we always calculate a resultant vector, which is some or two or more vectors. We never deal with the change in uh, subtraction of vectors. We calculate the sum of a number of vectors. The sum of a number of vectors is referred to as a resultant vector. So when we are confronted with a negative sign, we have to find a way of converting it into a plus sign so that we can say we are finding the sum. That is what happens. So this plus is this one. When it comes to this negative sign, a negative sign given to a vector means that it's the, the direction that has changed. Do you see that u is to the right? If I change its direction, it must point to the left. And that is exactly what I will do. And by changing the direction of this arrow, I effectively get rid of the negative sign. So I have these two arrows to add. You can think about this being a length of 9 centimeters and this being a length of 7.5 centimeters. When we put the two lengths together and we are adding them, we always connect them head to tail. So I'm going to connect this one or rather just leave it as it is. But then the next one, which is this one, I'll bring its head so that it, its head makes contact with the tail of this one. We say that we have connected these vectors head to tail. And when we do that, when we connect the vectors head to tail, in order to get a resultant vector, we draw a line from the first tail all the way to the last head. And we ask ourselves, what is the length of that arrow or that line? You will agree with me, if this is 9 centimeters and this is 7.5, you're going to get 16.5. In other words, uh, this value here will be 90 plus 75 in the direction of the final velocity. So, change in velocity is going to be equal to 90 plus 75, which is 165 meters per second 
to the left. In the direction in which this arrow points. So let me uh, dwell a little bit here because the moment you get this correct, the rest of the problem is solved. Why do I say that? The moment you get delta V, you find that T and M are given. We just need to plug in those values into that, that equation. But have we gotten the concept? Have we understood the concept? Why we could not be able to solve it in the first place? It lies here. Remember, when you are asked to calculate change in a vector, find a way of converting that. If it doesn't have a positive sign, find a way of converting that into a sum. And here I have v minus u. v minus u is same as v plus minus u. Point number two. When a vector carries a negative sign, it means that its direction has changed. It is in the opposite direction to the direction that was taken to be positive. For example, u is to the right. If I give u a negative sign, then it must point to the left, but it will carry the same magnitude. Magnitude is just this number and the unit. The direction is given by the direction in which the arrow points. The moment you get that, then it's just a matter of getting the two arrows, connecting, connect them like this, head to tail. And then the last point is to draw a straight line from the first tail to the last head. The direction of that arrow which points from the first tail to the last head gives us the direction of this resultant vector. That is so important. And the concepts I've taught here, they will work whether the two vectors are parallel or not. Even if they are in different directions, you just need to slide one arrow to the next one in such a way that the head of one is connected to the tail of the other, draw a line from the first tail to the last head, and that becomes your resultant vector. So at this point, it's just a matter of now saying f is equals to uh, this mass here is 200 grams, which is 0 0.2 kilograms. The change in velocity is 165. And that takes time in a takes place in a time of 20 milliseconds. And now I can get the final answer. So that is will be 0 0.2 times 165 divided by 0 0.02 and I get 1650. 1650 newtons. And this resultant force must be in the direction of the acceleration and the acceleration must be in the direction of the change in velocity, which is to the left. So this force is to the left. And indeed, it makes sense. Because when this tennis ball is struck with the racket, the force on it must be towards the left. And that is where it changes direction. And that is what I wanted to teach you today. In the next video, I'm going to show you more examples of the application of this particular concept so that the moment you understand this concept you will be able to enjoy problems like this ones here meanwhile before i upload that other video go through this video and see whether you can make sense of the various points that i mentioned in the video because i'm going to repeat them over and over again otherwise until then it's goodbye.